I want to introduce our next guest speaker this morning, Dr. Clarence Sarkadi Adu. And some of you have had the privilege of meeting him and hearing him speak, but also have seen him or w seen him when he was working and still is working with Banner and City of Hope. And he is now working also with a group in the community. We have a wonderful write-up on him in our folder. And I just wanted to remind you about there are uh, the resumes of everybody in the folder and also our agenda so that you can see that he brings a wealth of experience, but his dedication to myeloma and to other blood cancers is wonderful. But as you will hear and see, and he'll be here all day and for the Ask the Doctor, is that he listens, he cares, he knows all the alternatives out there, and we're so privileged to have him. Thank you, Dr. Adu. Thank you. That's very kind of you and very generous um, for you to ask me back again. This is such a wonderful privilege. It's just such, um, for what I do, I'm now in community practice, and it's just such a wonderful opportunity to be able to meet with a number of patients, caregivers, and also to hear from my colleagues. It's, um, it's in, in some ways, when I come to a conference like this and I'm hearing other speakers, I feel a little bit like, um, I feel a little bit like the jazz player um, from many years ago who was playing, um, for those of you who follow the history of, of jazz, that um, Fats was in a club playing late one night and then in walked Art Tatum and Fats refused to play anymore because he said better players were in the room. So in many ways, I feel as if my message is a small message. It's not a very big message. And much of what I've heard now is probably uh, much more important. But I'll share what I have. So I work with a group called Arizona Center for Cancer Care. It's a private practice group over in the East Valley. Um, previous to that, I was with the City of Hope where we did exclusively transplant and about a third or so of our patients were multiple myeloma patients. Prior to that, when I had been at the University of Maryland, I, I um, was more involved in treating patients who were not getting transplants. So for me, it's kind of been a full circle around and back to, to non-transplant treatment. And so I can see some of the changes that have really happened in the treatment of myeloma. And I think it's true. These are the good days, although I, I suspect even better days are ahead. By way of disclosure, um, I do speak for a company called Millennium, who are the manufacturers and marketers of, um, of um, Velcade, which is bortezomib, one of the drugs that is used in myeloma, which you'll hear about. The scope of my talk today, I'm just going to try and talk a little bit more about transplant, um, autologous transplant specifically, and its role in myeloma. Um, you've heard a lot about the non-transplant treatments and what they do, and I'll try to just conceptualize transplant so that it doesn't look so much like a black box of somebody going into transplant, and then we don't know what happens, and then they come out of transplant, but we'll hear a little bit about what happens in the transplant situation. So I'm hoping that we can understand a little bit about the procedure of transplant, what's actually done. Who is able to have a bone marrow transplant? What are some of the results of transplant? And when we talk about the results, of course, it's two sides. What are some of the side effects of transplant, but what are also some of the benefits and the results that we see with transplant? I thought I would um, use a very complicated and difficult to understand cartoon. So. I got my daughters who are wizards at PowerPoint to help me to do this. It's a small cartoon that just shows I'm sorry, I'm trying to figure out which one's the pointer. Yes, it's a small cartoon that just shows um, what I call good cells and bad cells. So it's an extreme simplification. There are literally dozens of other cell types and cell mechanisms and chemicals and, and hormones and, um, 
and things like that that affect these things, the bone marrow stroma and different organs and so on. But for our purposes, there are really just two types of cells in this cartoon. For the yellow cells, I'm using them to represent normal bone marrow cells. So these are the cells that will eventually mature and be released into the bloodstream and account for the red blood cells that help us carry oxygen around, the white blood cells that prevent infections, and the platelets that help us to prevent bleeding when the blood is, needs to be fluid in the blood vessels. So these are the normal cells. And then lurking in there are some, in this case of normal bone marrow, we do see a few normal plasma cells. And these are the cells that um, help us to have some immunity. Plasma cells are very long-lived. Remember, when, when if, you're, if you encounter a disease like measles or mumps in childhood, a certain cell in the body needs to learn how to fight these viruses and that cell in the body needs to be essentially able to fight that disease again when you're 70 years old or 80 years old and your great-granddaughter comes to the house and has measles or something like that. So these types of immune systems are very, um, very hardy and they, they are built for survival. And so very often when we're treating, for example, a patient with acute leukemia, and you've given them very, very high doses of chemotherapy so that you cannot find almost any other cells in the bone marrow. You'll look and a few plasma cells will still be surviving. And this is one of the problems we have when these cells become malignant, that they are built for longevity. But anyway, this is a normal bone marrow, normal cells, plasma cells. And as you heard before, in a patient with multiple myeloma, the number of plasma cells is increased. So this is just the little cartoon I'm going to use to show. And I'm going to use this to show a little bit of what the different treatments do to try and restore this situation back to this situation. When one is getting straightforward traditional chemotherapy, the idea is, the idea is to destroy as many of these plasma cells as possible while sparing as many of the good cells as possible. And how good a chemotherapy drug is or a, a chemotherapy approach is depends on how well it's able to restrict its destruction to just the plasma cells. It's not perfect now. It's much better than it used to be.